kids, welcome back. I'm Miss Brenna, I'm so glad you're here. Let's start with a prayer. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for every kiddo who's watching at home. I pray that we can dive into the Bible today, learn more about you, and see exactly how you want us to live our lives. We love you, amen. Happy September! It is a whole new month full of new opportunities and it is almost fall, which means that you guys are probably back to school. I know some of you might be at school and some of you might be at home doing school and both of those things are awesome. Now, there are tools that we need when we go back to school. You probably need a backpack if you're at school. If you're at home, you might not need a backpack, but they're still fun to have. And the tools that we need might be pencils, erasers, and maybe even paper, right? So those are all tools that we need in order to do school well. Now you might be thinking, why do I have to go to school? Why is school so important? Well, let me tell you, school helps us become wise. Now, wisdom is the combination of the things that we learn and the things that we see. And being wise is so important because our entire life is based on the decisions that we make. And when we're wise, it helps us make good decisions. And I think that's our new series. It's called Wise. This whole month, we're gonna be learning about how to make good decisions, how to become wise and follow God and do the things that he wants us to do. Now this weekend, we're learning about someone named Solomon, King Solomon. He was the son of King David. Remember last month, we talked about David when he was a boy, but he grew up to be a great king. And his son was Solomon. Now Solomon, needed to rule well. He needed to take care of his people. And he knew that he could get wisdom from God. Oh my goodness, I think that's it. That's our big idea. Wisdom comes from God. Now remember, wisdom is the combination of the things we've learned and the things that we see. And when we learn from those things and we take them in, we can make good choices. Ultimately, wisdom comes from God. And today we're going to learn exactly how Solomon got wisdom from God. But before we dive into that, we have a little guest star. He has to make a decision between two things. And I want to see if you guys can guess right about the decision that he makes. Let's see what it is. Oh, 
story today. We're talking all about Solomon and he was a king who ruled over Israel while Israel was still whole. So that meant that all the tribes of Israel, the different the different people in their tribes, they were still all together under one king and Solomon ruled over them and guided them along. For 40 years he guided them in unity. And did you know that Solomon was Jesus's ancestor? Which means that they were related. God chose for Jesus to come from a long line of amazing people. And Solomon was a very important step God took in order to bring Jesus to us. So if there hadn't been Solomon, there might not have been Jesus. So God laid out this lineage of people so that we could get to Jesus, so that Jesus could be born one day. So that is why Solomon is such a big, important part of God's whole story, ultimately guiding us to Jesus. Now, if you guys have your Bibles, I want you to open it up to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. And we're going to read a little bit. It says, The Lord appeared to Solomon. He spoke to him in a dream during the night. God said, ask for anything you want me to give you. Solomon answered, you have been very kind to my father David, your servant. That's because he was faithful to you. He did what was right. His heart was honest and you have continued to be very kind to him. You have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Stop. Let's talk about that for a second. So Solomon starts out talking to God by being thankful. He was so thankful for the way that God had been a part of David's life and the way that he had guided David. So that's how we should start our prayers and how we should talk to God too, is by starting with thankfulness and saying, this is what I'm thankful for and I want you to know that I see those things. God is so happy when we do that. Now, let's keep reading in verse seven. It says, Lord, my God, you have now made me king. You've put me in the place of my father, David, but I'm only a little child. I don't know how to carry out my duties. I'm here among the people you have chosen. They are a great nation. They are more than anyone can count. So give me a heart that understands that I can rule over your people. I can tell the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Who can possibly rule over this great nation of yours? So let's think about that for a second. So Solomon is, he's asking God to give him wisdom, but not wisdom that would benefit him and only him. Wisdom that would help Solomon guide his people. 
He asked God for help in living a life that would please God and help the people he was ruling over. Solomon knew that God is the only one he could get wisdom from. And Solomon wanted to do the right thing and make the right choices. Remember, because wisdom's all about making the right choices. So that's what Solomon wanted to do. Let's keep reading at verse 10. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for that. So God said to him, you have not asked to live for a long time. You have not asked to be wealthy. You have not even asked to have your enemies killed. Instead, you have asked for understanding. You want to do what is right and fair when you judge people, because that is what you have asked for. I will give it to you. I will give you a wise and understanding heart. So here's what will be true of you. There has never been anyone like you and there never will be. So Solomon asked God for wisdom and God said yes. Because Solomon asked for something that would not only help himself but help others, God granted him what he asked for. God wanted Solomon to lead the people well. And so he helped Solomon do that. Now, let's keep reading in verse 13 it says and that is not all i will give you what you have not asked for i will give you riches and honor as long as you live no other king will be as great as you stop let's think about that so not only did god answer solomon's prayer and solomon's ask for wisdom but he also gave him way more than he asked for God was so pleased with Solomon for wanting to be wise and wanting to lead his people well that he gave Solomon a great life and he blessed him. Now that's what God will do for us. He will bless us when we devote our lives to him and when we make the right choices. That's why it's so important to be wise so that we can make the right choices to please God and do what God wants us to do with our lives. Now, do you think God would give you wisdom if you asked for it? Do you think he could give you more than you asked for? Let's stop and think about that for a minute. I believe that God will give us wisdom when we ask for it. Now that doesn't mean God will make us super smart right away. Doesn't mean poof, we're the smartest person in the world. No, that's not what it means. It means that God will guide us down the path of wisdom. That means it's still our job to seek ways to learn. So that means we are still praying to God every day, asking how to make the right choice. It also means that we are going to older people that we respect, maybe our parents, a teacher, a pastor, a Sunday school teacher. It means that you are going to those people and you're asking them for help and how to make wise choices. When we ask God for wisdom, he agrees to help us seek that wisdom, but it's still our job to practice it every day and to practice being wise. Now, making a wise choice means we choose to do what would please God and not what would please us. So let's say you and your sibling are having a fight and you are so upset you just want to lash out and maybe hit them. But you think about how to be wise in the situation. You stop. I know it's so hard to stop when you're so angry, but you stop. You take a deep breath and you go and talk to your parents about it. You pull them in, you say, help us figure this out so that we don't hurt each other. That is what making a wise choice looks like and that makes God so happy. There are so many places to make wise choices. There are opportunities everywhere, at home, at school, with our friends. At school, making a wise choice might look like doing your best work always doing your best and completing your schoolwork that's a wise choice because it will help you later on 
making a wise choice with your friends might look like you choosing to be around people that are nice, that treat you well, and that you treat well too. That's what making a wise choice looks like in those areas of your life. Ultimately, making a wise choice brings us closer to being like Jesus. God sent Jesus to us to be the perfect example, which means that we can look to him when we need help figuring out what to do. Now, Jesus was very wise. He made good decisions every day. And that's why we can look to him. That's why God sent Jesus here, so that we would have an example of God in a human form. Jesus was God in a human form. And now we can look at that example and be more like him. And when we're more like Jesus, it makes God happy. And it makes this world a better place for everyone. So let's do that this week and this month as we're looking forward into how to be wise. We want to choose to make wise choices and learn how to do that with the help of God and with the help of people by us so that we can ultimately change this world to be a place full of hope and love and joy, which is exactly what God wants. And so that we can all be examples of Jesus. Now, our memory verse this month points us right to wisdom and what to do when we need it, just like Solomon. So let's read it together. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God and it will be given to you. James chapter one, verse five. Remember to memorize that verse this month because when we memorize things, it lives in our mind and our hearts and it will help us make those wise choices that will please God. Now let's close with a prayer. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the things that you are teaching us through Solomon's story. I pray that we can become wise just like Jesus. I pray that every time we're looking to be, be better and do better, that we look towards Jesus because he was the ultimate example. God, help us to change our world to be full of hope, to be full of joy and love. God, we love you. Amen. I had so much fun with you guys today. Now it's time to stand up, get ready to praise Jesus, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Do you?